So tonight we got a cool one here. We're going to convert the front hub of a motorcycle over to dual disc brakes. I have some customer supplied drawings and specs, so we're going to kind of wheel off of what he has. We're going to see what we can do with this. So we have the hub here and two disc rotors. I've already went through and drilled them a little oversized to get rid of the paint, ground off the paint there. And what we have to do is fill these in because this is a five bolt pattern and it has to bolt onto a six bolt pattern. And by the time we end up making a six bolt pattern on this, we're going to be into one of these holes no matter what we do. So I'm going to fill these holes on both these rotors, front and back, clean them up, and then we're going to drill these out. We have to fix this here. We're going to have to cut this down. This piece actually will have to trim down to a smaller diameter because we have to turn this as well, but take I think half a mil off of it. And then we're going to drill and tap so that this will fit on there. That's for the speedo. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. So we'll have to take a half a mil off of each side of this face right here. And on that side as well, fill these holes and re-drill the bolt pattern to accept it for this. So we're going to start with just doing the holes. Let's get those done. I think I'm going to have to change up and try something else. something to do with it. I might have been losing a little flow. My cup seemed to be loose. Let's see what happens on the second go. Alright, I got it figured out. It was all gas issues. So first my cup was loose, and when I changed my bottle, my regulator got knocked. I didn't notice that, and I was uh, low on actual gas, I, and then I bumped up my pre-flow and my post-flow a little bit as well. So, things seem to be working a lot better. Alright, last side. cleaned up, faced off, and then uh, drill some new holes in it. So, stick with us. Okay, so we have this uh, brake rotor chucked up in the lathe. I used a four jaw. I could have used a three jaw and grabbed it here, but then that would have rang like a mother. So we're going to take a little skim off of this and then a little skim off of this to clean everything up. We'll still be within tolerance. There was a little bit of warpage because of the welding and we just want to take all that out but there wasn't a whole lot so we're set up. This is our tool carbide. We're gonna run it very slow and just take a light cut. First side skimmed and now we're just going to skim the, the bolt face there where we're going to drill our new bolt hole pattern. So uh, yeah, we've already started but you can join us.
going to. done with facing off this one we're gonna have to take the grinder and buff it up the flap and wheel around some of the high spots because where it's welded to the edge it has hardened a little bit and the carbide creates a little bump around each one of those so we're going to uh, knock those down and then uh, flip them over and get ready to do the other side so uh, let's get that done so you can still see where I had welded the holes once it's painted you won't notice that and once it's mounted on the bike you won't notice that now we're just using the flat wheel to blend the raised edges that way everything mounts flat when it's together onto the side all right so this is a very slow process but we got this side done I'm just about to swap it out and do the second one. I didn't think that we needed to show both of them. So, uh, yeah, same as the other side except flipped. Uh, I'll try and do maybe a quick just run through. Um, when I'm putting these on, I am running a feeler gauge on the back side to make sure that my turned face is actually flush up against the chuck jaws in order to keep this side flush, no matter what it may be. Everything seems to be working out pretty good, though. So we're going to keep going. Okay, same thing, we're going to take the grinder and just clean the high spots off of that a little bit and then we'll get them set up in the mill. Okay, since we have two of these, we're going to run a stop in here and here and this will jam into it and then we'll clamp it down on either side, dial our hole, put our new bolt pattern in and we can take this one out, put the new one in and everything should line up in the same location. We'll check it because I'm not positive, but we'll get that done. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna get my readout to it in. All right, get this spun up and uh, light center. Found the center of this hole and then just finished putting in my specs here for the bolt hole pattern. So if we go into special function, bolt hole, circle, six holes, zero is going to be our center, zero on our Y for center, our radius is going to be 40 millimeters, our start angle is going to be at 270 which will put us at the top, and then we're ready to rock and roll. So we're on hole one and we're within a couple tenths of where we need to be. So we're going to go through and yeah, once you finish that one you just kind of hit enter and it'll come up hole two. Hit enter again, hole three. And so on and so forth. This is actually going to be kind of interesting because uh, I'm not too sh sure how hard that actually has gotten. Find out. Here we go. Doesn't 
seem to like that too much. So we switched over to a carbide end mill. This really helped the process a lot easier. Just had a couple hardened spots here and there. And this was able to work its way through. started on one of the first holes that I had welded up and that hardened around there so I think that's why the drill bit had a hard time the rest of them look pretty good except for the last one there again but I'm noticing there that it's probably into one of the old holes as well so we'll get the other one up here I'm gonna check it dial it in just to make sure that we're close and uh, we'll get that one done as well so we'll do that right quick let's go hurry up Take it to just try 57.8. We need to check this. This is okay. This is 59.8, and that one was 57.8, so exactly two mil. So to stop here, right about there. So, what I'm doing here is I'm setting my stop so that I don't go any further than that. go we'll wind this up right to there let's get at her we'll just take another skim off that that's you There we are, she fits on. So, we're good to go there. I just want to see, make sure my holes, everything lined up good. Which they do. Perfect. Now we just need to gear up our speedometer, which is this piece here. So, we're going to have to take this lip off of it, drill some holes in it. And then we have to do the same on this side, drill and tap some holes here, so that that will actually bolt to that flush instead of sit the way it is right now. This is the speedo for the bike. We had to take the lip off of it, and now that is going to sit right there. We're dialed up. We've moved over 24 and a half millimeters. We're going to drill this hole, tap it, and then we're going to do the other side over here, tap it, and then we'll put a countersink in each side of this so that we get some flush mount screws in there, and then this job will be done. Drill and tap these for 632. So I'm using a number 36 drill and we're gonna go down, zero it, and then take it down about a half inch. Drill a couple of holes and countersink this cover.
Okay, so we have this piece on. Put two countersunk screws in it. That'll hold that nice. This is for your Speedo. That's attached there. And this is an old rotor, but that rotor can fit on over that. And one on the other side. And here's the two rotors, finished and complete. I mean, who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. All right, guys, that does it for this one. That was a cool little job to convert over from single brake to dual discs on the front. And I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, see you later, buzzy.